Good morning. Welcome to our garden discovery series on this Saturday, second Saturday in March. Uh, my name is Mary Tharp. I'm a member of the Botanic Garden Foundation and our foundation together with the library produces this series of information about our botanic gardens and other gardening matters to you, the general public. We're pleased to have you with us today. Today, our program is on the Louisiana iris, which is our state national wildflower. Our presenter is Claire Fontenot, who for decades has been working in the Botanic Garden Daylily and Iris Gardens, along with her volunteers each Monday and Friday mornings. Uh, she is so knowledgeable of all of the procurement, the planting and the care of the Louisiana Iris, and I know you'll find her information very uh, rewarding for this morning. We uh, asked Claire to join us. She is really experienced in gardening lectures and productions. She has she teaches with the Ollie program. She's a member of the Master Gardeners Presentation Committee. Uh, very often they have programs at the public libraries. So I don't want to take any more of your time. I'll pass it on to Claire for her presentation this morning. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning. We're going to be talking about Louisiana Iris this morning, and we're going to go ahead and cover some of the, the species. And this particular photograph has been taken a couple of years ago at the Botanic Garden, which is actually in the adjoining area from the uh, Goodwood Library. Main thing that I want you to uh, take from this is that it is the um, Louisiana Iris is actually one of the uh, native things that Mary had already gone ahead and said. Main thing I want you to do is to be able to recognize them, halfway understand what the different species and the varieties. There's an awful lot of varieties. We used to have roughly 300 different types of Louisiana, not types, different uh, cultivars. In other words, they came from originally four to five different ones. Some of the history is the um, some of the history. Benjamin Small in the late uh, late nineteen twenties was the curator of the New York Botanic Garden, and he was on a railroad train, a window car, the last car in the uh, in the train going north and he saw the Louisiana Iris and went ahead and he actually did some research and he publicized them to where they were called that. They're not called Louisiana Iris because they originated in Louisiana. It's all along the Gulf Coast. Uh, this particular picture was taken at the Botanic Gardens last year, the year before. The um, there's four native species, and then there's always the fifth, that Nelsione was a iris that was found in Abbeville. So they've gone ahead and added that to the uh, collection. There's really five, uh, Iris fulva, Iris gigantica, Cerulea, Nelsione, Hexagona, and the alba, the Iris gigantica, Cerulea alba is actually one that is solid white. And it's interesting. Now, this first one, we're, we're going to go ahead and discuss the, the, the five species first. Now, you're looking at one that's kind of rust colored and it's iris fulva, and it's always that particular shape. It's a small flower. It's only 12 inches tall, but in the species themselves, they're gonna have four or five different colors. This is the only one that's yellow. Uh, a lot of people mistakenly and call our sedacris uh, the yellow flag, the species, but that's not it. It's this one. And the yellow is very, very hard to find. A gigantic cerulea is actually one of the species that is the most popular 
It's one that will go ahead and reproduce very, very easily. And it uh, is tall. It's gonna be, the stalks are about two to three feet tall. It actually comes in blue, purple, pink, and we did discuss the white, but in general, this is the one that people automatically do. Now, if you'll notice this nondescript uh, three inch bloom, it's got a 12 inch zigzag stalk. The stalk actually looks just like a Z and it's routinely, and you'll notice this is not something that you probably would care to have in your garden. It's just too plain. And now, Nelsie Ohm, Iris Nelsione is the one that was found in, in Abbeville, and it's a little bit fancier than the others on the thing, but it's very, very good for you to be able to go ahead and grow it. Now, this Iris Hexagona is the, uh, the one that blooms the ladies. It's the one that is probably the fanciest of the group. Now, I want you to go ahead and look to see about the flower parts. Flower of a Louisiana iris has six petals. Uh, they're not called petals. They're, call, they're called standards and, and falls. Now the, uh, the petal that's a fall is the one that's the widest. In if you look at this, it's in a triangle. You've got wide petals on three of the, of the petals. And then the skinnier ones are the standards. Don't worry about it. When you're going to see the regular flower, it's going to make sense to you. This is one of the ways that we get to go ahead and separate what one flower is and what the other flower is. If you look at this Iris uh, picture right here, I want you to notice that the falls, which are the water petals, have the signal, which is usually gold or sometimes yellow, but always uh, present on the thing. That's critical because this is what's known as a single. Now the double will go ahead and have this particular color on all of the petals. Now your foliage is interesting. Uh, your foliage is, is green. It's, we call it semi-evergreen because in the hottest part of the, uh, hottest part of the summer, it's gonna kind of die back a little bit. Of the uh, iris that you see on the left is full eclipse and it's a fairly dark colored one and it's very popular. And this is pretty much a picture of what the gardens ordinarily, uh, they're, they're stressed this year. We had a freeze a couple of uh, weeks ago, which really doesn't affect ours at all. But the uh, combination of the long wet season and everything, we do this. Uh, this is, pictures that weren't taken this year, obviously. The bloom period is really the last week in uh, March and the first two weeks in April. They're gonna be a little bit later this year because I was in the garden yesterday and there are no buds. There are no uh, stalks, flower stalks up yet. And there probably should, should be a few. I have this picture so that you can actually see the way they bloom because it's really peculiar. I think it's peculiar. The iris will bloom at the top. The first one will bloom first. And if you look at the uh, dead bloom up in the upper left, that's the one that was the first to bloom and it is, has died. The next will be going right straight down the, the area to where uh, at the end, on the bottom. Now you're gonna go ahead and have three to five. Uh, sometimes you may have seven or eight of them in the thing, but where this dead bloom is up at the top on the top left, you're gonna have another one to bloom at the end. So it's the first one at the top to bloom and at the end of its flowering season, it's gonna go ahead and be the last one to bloom. This is colorific and it has two tones. You'll notice that the, uh, the falls are, are lavender purple and the standards are white on the thing. That's still uh, something that you need to go ahead and see. They have a tendency to be very prolific uh, as they're going ahead and planted. Now, most everybody that you talk to when you say iris, they're gonna think of the bearded iris. 
uh, because it's an automatic thing. It gets popularized more. I wanted you to see the difference in the size and difference in the shape. This particular iris is called bearded because the standards fall, they go together up at the top and they look pretty much about the size of a golf ball. And many, more often than not, it's two colored. Uh, sometimes they're not, but most of the time it is. Still an iris, but it's not a Louisiana iris. So I'd like for you to go ahead and know the difference because Louisiana iris is, have the tendency to go ahead and grow very, very well in this part of the uh, state. Bearded iris do fine north of Alexandria. Uh, Shreveport, they do very, very well. Lower portion of, of Arkansas, they really do ve very well. And if you look at the iris plant itself, it is different than the regular Louisiana iris. Louisiana iris in general, usually have a stalk of maybe 16 to 36 inches or the thing. Most of them are semi-evergreen. If they have very good conditions, they're gonna be evergreen. Uh, they're gonna have a, the green foliage after the bloom is gonna be fine. The flowers are a lot of different colors. You've got burgundy, pink, blue, purple, combinations of everything, lavender, white, and yellow. The bloom pattern in general is March through April. Now. Some bloom early in the season, some bloom late in the season, some are mid-season blooms. But you do need to understand that Louisiana iris bloom period is a short time. Uh, it's from three to six weeks. You have the, uh, the species, the iris gigantica will always go ahead and be the first one to bloom. Uh, there is one that ordinarily blooms in January for us. For some reason or other, it has a tendency to go ahead and bloom. It's over by the, uh, by the pavilion. It's the only one, and it doesn't matter too, too much as far as the uh, temperature or not. It can be very, very cold, but it decides to go ahead and bloom. Where are you going to want to plant? Well, you really need to have a certain amount of sun for them to go ahead and and bloom. Now you're thinking now they, they grow in the swamps and they grow in the season. They don't have a lot of uh, sunshine, but they really do because a lot of the uh, plants that you're going to go ahead, a lot of the trees in the swamp are deciduous. So you're going to have a good amount of sun in the middle of the uh, winter. Now you want to go ahead and have six inches of soil that's fairly well uh, you have either compost or fertilizer in them. It can grow in the pond. It can grow in on the edge of a pond, but it can grow in open moist areas. But what it really does, it does very, very well in the uh, cultivated area. Now, as far as maintenance, you really need to go ahead and figure probably an inch of water a week. If you really don't have that much water a week, you need to go ahead and add extra water because they really need to have a certain amount of moisture to be able to go ahead and bloom. The question that many people say, now, you know, I'd have some iris, but they're not blooming. Three fourths of the time, they don't have adequate water. They don't have adequate fertilizer. They're what's called heavy feeders. They probably need more fertilizer than the average plant in general. Or it could be that the variety itself doesn't bloom that much. As far as putting mulch, you need two to three inches of mulch. And that probably needs to be added to on a yearly basis because the mulch in general will go ahead and disintegrate and you will go ahead and have the plant to go ahead and absorb whatever nutrients they have. As far as dividing and planting, uh, they can go probably two to three years without being divided. They can do longer than that because, because most of the time if they've got space to move, they will do fine. Uh, as far as insects and diseases, we probably are fortunate in that they really don't have that many insects or diseases. Uh, if you have roses in the general area that you have Louisiana iris, they have a tendency to 
have thrips on the iris, but they don't affect the bloom. They don't affect the rhizome. So we really don't worry about them. As far as planting and dividing, I want to show you the next slide and we'll go back to the other one. Uh, this is what a Louisiana iris rhizome looks like. Uh, you'll notice you've got 12 to, sometimes you'll have 12 to 14 inches. Sometimes it makes a, a, a TP fact. In other words, you'll have two or three rhizomes that are eight to 15 inches long. What you're gonna look on the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see that it's going to hit, it's cut three to four inches. And you wanna go ahead and use that particular portion, even though it does not have any root system. Depending on what you read, a lot of people will tell you, you go ahead and just keep the rhizome that has the, the roots on the end. But the ones that have the, if you'll see the ridges on the uh, rhizome on the picture on the left, those ridges have a potential to have what's known as side shoots on both sides. Not every ridge was, will go ahead and do it. Depends on what kind it is, but most often than not, it's gonna go ahead and have, if you look at the lower picture, you're gonna have one on the far right. That's the one that's gonna bloom. The two offsets are gonna bloom also. They will also, the two offsets, which you'll see in the middle, will go ahead and grow 12 to 16 inches. Sometimes they'll only grow six inches, but most of the time it's a foot. And it will go ahead and bloom. The, part that you cut in the top part is going to go ahead and put out offshoots. They may not bloom the first year, but the second year you probably get a bloom. You really don't want to cut them one to two inches or let's say an inch, say thinking that you'll go ahead and get more. If you only have one or two ridges, it's going to go ahead and take about three years for it to go ahead and bloom. Now we didn't talk about seeds, but when they bloom, you want to go ahead and discard the seeds because it'll take three to five years for it to bloom. And the seeds are never true to form like the rhizomes are. So you always want to go ahead and do the rhizomes. You want to use a garden fork to dig. You really don't want to do with a, a, with a shovel to cut the rhizomes. You want to go ahead or use your hand if you're soil is good enough, just go ahead and lift the rhizomes, it'll be fine. You wanna cut the leaves, the foliage, you wanna cut them about six inches tall. You don't wanna have 15 inches of foliage because it's gonna to take too long for that to go ahead and reproduce. The rhizomes, you wanna clean clippers. You don't need to use Clorox, you can use soap and water on a thing. If you happen to use Clorox, always rinse your clippers with water afterward because they'll go ahead, the Clorox affects your, your clippers. When you're gonna go ahead and plant them, if you have over three to five inches of root system, you wanna go ahead and cut it. You wanna leave about three inches. Many times you're gonna go ahead and have a foot of root system and you're thinking, well, I'm gonna go ahead and make it harder to take care of. Well, what you want to do is you want to have the root system able to have contact with the soil and the nutrients in the soil so that it grow. You don't want a whole bunch of crimped root system that really won't be able to go ahead and absorb water. Now, the uh, division I have down here that you can keep them in water. As a general rule, you really don't need to put them in water. Just don't put them in the sun. If you have them out of the ground for a week or so, they're gonna do fine. If they're in the direct sun, it's gonna go ahead and affect your uh, blooming. And it'll, all, it'll also dry up the rhizomes, so it'll, it'll affect the rhizomes in general. Dividing, when you go ahead and divide, you just wanna go ahead and make it as quick as possible. You really wanna get the roots, the uh, rhizomes and, the rhizome is different than a bulb. A bulb is like an onion and it has a root system underneath. A rhizome is something that grows directly underneath the ground. Notice I noticed directly underneath the ground. You really don't wanna go ahead and put them 10, 12 inches in the, in the soil because they're not able to go ahead and 
uh, reproduce in that way. You want it about an inch or two below where the ground is. As far as planting and dividing, you, want, you, you can do it between August and October. Uh, you can really do it in November and early December. I've already gone ahead and divided them the uh, middle of uh, December. We had, uh, we had blooms in March on the thing. They pretty much bloom when, when they really can. If you'll notice the container that's on the lower right-hand side, you're gonna go ahead and see um, something that they sell at box stores. Uh, people use this particular container to uh, mix mortar for concrete. Uh, they don't have holes in them. It comes in two different sizes. It, this is a medium that you're looking at. The large is, is just a little bit deeper in, in uh, depth and it's probably two or three inches wider on both sides. People are using this many, many times because they find that there are less weeds and you can keep up uh, different types separated. They work very, very well. They, uh, it holds it. Now you plant them in soil, but it goes ahead and gets the, uh, the soil, it keeps the water that's on it. Uh, this is a picture that I took when I went. City Park in New Orleans has a, an island attached to it. And the Louisiana Irish Society is going ahead. Or it's a combination of things. They're propagating uh, Louisiana Irish in that particular area. But it is an island. It's right behind where the uh, horse, uh, where the stables, where the horse stables are. And if you look at the picture that you're looking at right now, there is no irrigation in this area. The, this is a half of the area. Uh, the beds on the left are actually beds that are made with, uh, with wood, but they're lined in black plastic. They're not, they don't have soil. All of the Louisiana R's are in separate containers. The, one in the middle that you see that's elevated, those are, the, those are the containers that I showed you previously on the thing. And they are at a certain height. Now you're wondering now, why would they be at that height? Well, this is an easy way to take care of them. You know, people work out there as volunteers. Uh, they get a certain amount of sun and the containers fill with water when it does rain. There is running water there, but they don't use them at all for the hours. If you look to the far right, you're gonna see a whole lot of circled containers. Those have uh, drainage holes in the bottom. Uh, sometimes they will go ahead and uh, cover those so that the iris will go ahead and propagate. What they're doing, they're doing a lot of uh, rejuvenation on the thing in different ones. When Katrina came, in 2005, it killed a whole lot of the iris in the swamp and in the other area. Jean Lafitte uh, Park, they've gone ahead and, and done that. They've done a whole lot in uh, western portion of Louisiana. They're still working. There's somebody in Baton Rouge that works and, and all over. They're trying to go ahead and re- plant, but they, what they're planting is just species. Now I have some pictures of some cultivars that are not species that we ordinarily take. Now the varieties in the bloom time changes on the thing. Size of the flower, pretty much five inches to seven inches. Very, uh, you'll have a few smaller ones, bloom, bloom time changes. And the size of the rhizome changes. The rhizome can be the size of your little finger or it could be the size of your thumb. It doesn't have anything to do with the size of the flower. And that I think is fairly interesting. Now iris in general, they're either diploids or tetraploids. That has to do with the chromosome. Uh, the diploids have uh, smaller amounts of differentiations as far as the pictures go. You'll see some different ones. Uh, Tetrapro has got 
four and it's going to go ahead and have more you're going to have curly leaves you're going to have different colors and different shapes now we need to go ahead and talk about single versus double because louisiana iris has are either single or they're double and what single means is that when you look at the picture on the left which is colorific now it is two-tone it's got two different colors but that has nothing to do with the single the falls are only three the falls have the signal the signal is a goal that you're going to go ahead and see right close to the white the standards just a white or uh, white petals you see you do have the six petals if you look on the upper right hand corner at rose cartwheel you have all of the petals now you still have standards and and falls but they all have the same color they have a uh, and she's one of the few that has the heavy colorations as far as the uh, the signal. The signal is what's known as the color. Now, if you look on the lower right, and that's not really a good picture of Delta Star. She's much darker than that. She's pretty much navy blue. But you've got a signal on every leaf, and every leaf is basically, it looks almost identical. Now, the, the leaves are different in size, but they do have the same look on the thing. Now, Marie Dolores is everybody's favorite. It's white. It's white and she's like five or six inches tall and she's got a good strong stalk. If you cut it and you go ahead and put it in the face, you're gonna have blooms for probably a week, week and a half at least on the thing. It's a good grower. It's got curly edged leaves that you don't notice that much in that particular picture, but it really shows when it's in the thing. Now, this is Freddie Bar, and Freddie Bar is, is red. But if you really look at it good, you've got red falls, and the standards, the smaller leaves, the smaller petals are actually rose colored. And that's pretty much identical to what he looks like. Uh, it's got a short stalk. So I don't think he comes up more than about 10, 18 inches on the thing. Blooms, probably four to five blooms in a thing, but it's always true to color. It's not a, not a change in the colors on the thing. Now, full eclipse is navy bordering on dark, dark. It's not black though. It's really a dark purple. The signals are, are there. And it is, doesn't grow as pro prolific as some of the others, but it's a standard uh, variety and it does, it does well. Uh, this is Delta Store. She has a tendency, you'll notice it's darker th than the other that I showed you on the thing. Uh, produces very, very liberally on the thing. The rhizome's about the size of your little finger. Doesn't get any, the rhizome doesn't get any bigger than that but the plant itself really does. Uh, flare out happens to be another double, and that's probably all the doubles that we have in the, in the garden. Flare out's a popular one because it's purple and gold. I mean, everybody knows LSU's purple and gold. I don't think it's that purple, but that's what you like on the thing. This is black game cop. It's dark and it is almost black. It's very short doesn't reproduce very much and doesn't have a whole, you'll have one or two flowers on it and it blooms pretty much mid season. Now Clyde Redmond is everybody's favorite because it's blue. You think about ours, you think about a blue ours and it is very good as far as usually it's gonna go ahead and bloom a, probably about four or five blooms on the stalk, but you'll see the signal in the thing and it's a good, pale blue, which is what everybody really, your pale blue and your orchid colored one, well, I'll show you in a minute. Now, Laura Louise is yellow, and she is a yellow that has a tendency to go ahead and grow very vigorously. We have seven or eight different yellows that are hybrids. They have a tendency not to reproduce as easily as the rest. Professor Barber pretty much does. But the uh, Laura Louise, 
doesn't really look like an iris because you've got so many blooms on the thing. Christy G, most people think that it looks, it's an orchid color. Um, very prolific. Uh, got two to three feet and the, the bloom is about four or five inches wide, but it is one of the ones that they will go ahead and use to go ahead and develop a lot of others. Doesn't have a curly edge, but it has a ten, all of the things that they want to go ahead and use. Professor Claude is really a purple. It's a deep purple. And it's really interesting because Professor Claude is this deep, rich purple, and the signal is circular. We have a Professor Ike that looks very, very similar as far as color, but he's got a pointed signal. So the, uh, and Mertzweiler is the one that went ahead and produced him. And he, the directions are exactly the same, but he figured that they were two separate ones. We have a good amount of Joe Mertzweiler's uh, flowers. We also have a good amount of Patrick O'Connor's and several of the others. Uh, two or three years ago, right after the flood, we added probably 75 different varieties from different hybridizers that wanted us to go ahead and grow them to see how they would grow in a public garden. It's a, we have pretty much a large collection of irises. Uh, Professor Neal is everybody's favorite. And uh, Marsh Wallace said that he went ahead and named it Neal for Neil Olinwald, who actually lives in Baton Rouge also. Uh, it's a rust colored on the thing and his signal is round on the thing. And Professor Jim that I don't have a picture of has a pointed uh, signal and it is basically the same color. That's a tetraploid. This is Professor Marta Marie, and it really looks exactly like what you see in this particular picture. The deep rolls for the falls, and you've got curly edges, and then you've got the uh, standards that have the curly edges also, but you notice there's a different tone and different color. Uh, she's a tetraploid and has easily I think she's outstanding. Some people don't really care for her, but everyone has their own taste. So Symphonetta is a pretty blue and it is something that you probably would go, go ahead and use it as a cut. You know, I'm saying cut flowers. Most people leave them out so that they'll go ahead and bloom, but they can be used as a cut flower in an arrangement. Uh, this is wheel horse, which is not that much of a distinctive flower if you go ahead and put her next to Professor Morta Marie, but this is pretty much the one that they will go ahead and use to cross pollinate to develop new plants. Uh, it has a lot of different things that they want every cultivar to have. What the, what the uh, hybridizer is looking for, they want to have a strong stalk, they want to have a flower that is is going to go ahead and bloom for in several days at least. It has wants a true color. Many of them like the curled color curled edges. Many of them are looking for a white around the rim of the edge, which I don't think I have one in in this, but it is popular. It has a regular colored fall and standards, but there's a rim of white all around the edge. Now this is Honey Star and it is a small, it's three to four inch, really three inches and a short stalk. It's kind of brown. It has a tendency, it's not rust colored, uh, but it's a refreshing look when you see it in the garden itself. Now Bear's got color, curly edges and she's got, you're not sure whether it's blue or whether it's a little bit purple. It's got a little of this and a little of that, but it blooms consistently. And you notice the signal is only on the uh, three edges on the thing. Now ours are deer resistant. So we need to go ahead and tell all of our neighbors that are troubled with deer for some reason or other, they have a tendency not to, not to deal with them at all. Uh, they're fairly drop tolerant. And you are going to have different ones. Now, you'll see at the bottom, slugs and snails, they really don't bother 
ours that much, but thrifts will. And when you take a picture with a digital camera, you'll go ahead and, and see it on the computer when you, but when you go ahead and uh, print it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna show. It's kind of interesting. Uh, aphids don't affect the, uh, the bloom. And when we find that things don't affect the bloom or the rhizome, we don't worry about it. The uh, bearded eyes, I wanted to go ahead and I wanted you to understand a whole lot about Louisiana iris, but I wanted you to also know about other iris plants that you can get and they grow well in Louisiana. And we're gonna go ahead and put bearded iris. Bearded iris are gonna probably last you a year or two years. You, it's pretty, you can buy it and use it as an annual. The reason why I say they won't go ahead and last is because they're very susceptible to iris borer. Now, the iris borer is something that exactly what it says. It just goes ahead and drills a hole right through the rhizome, kills the rhizome. For some reason or other, Louisiana iris are not affected by it very much. Once in a while, we'll go ahead and see it and we'll just discard that. But the bearded iris will succumb to it almost every time. I still buy them and enjoy them. And I wanted you to go ahead and understand if you do buy them, because they sell them in the, in the nurseries. They need at least a half a day of sun. They like fertile, neutral soil. They will not grow in a pond. The... Uh, Bearded iris do better in a special bed. The reason why they need a special bed is because of the drainage and you really don't want to mulch them a whole lot. Uh, they want kind of loose soil. And in, uh, in Ellie, for some reason or other, they don't have a whole lot of extra moisture and the iris borers don't affect them that much. You want to go ahead and plant your bearded iris different from the Louisiana iris. Bearded iris, you will go ahead and have a portion of the rhizome showing. So you actually put it on top of the ground, put a little bit of mulch on the side, and the rhizome, half of the rhizome is gonna be exposed to the sun. When you do this to Louisiana iris, if the rhizomes are all exposed to the sun, they will not bloom. And many times the rhizome itself will shrivel up and die. When you want to plant rhizomes, you want to go ahead and put them in groups of two to three or four. Now, this is what bearded iris look like. Many times the, the standards in the falls are different colors or different shades of the same color. They're very pretty. And you'll notice the, the arm sight and everything is a they still have the same parts, they're just done differently. The one on the right, you'll notice the signal has a little bit of a fuzzy part. It almost looks like there's maybe a quarter of an inch tall on the thing. And they make it very interesting. Now, walking hours do well over here too. There are different types of walking hours. When you say walking hours, there's a yellow, there's the one with the multicolor that you see on the lower right. It really will grow well in the shade. It's an excellent plant. It will die when we have a freeze. It has killed every walking iris that you have, except I think the yellow is not going to be as susceptible. But it has killed everything I had in my landscape that is walking iris. But you'll see the, the flower is pretty. Now that's about the size of the flower and it's very, has a whole lot of flowers. And the reason why it's called walking iris is that it actually puts in shoots on the end. It, it puts out, uh, the rhizome is underneath in the ground, but it will also go ahead and put out a stem that will go ahead and root. So it has a tendency to walk. It will fill in an area if you give it the right amount of space and everything. Now the yellow iris, and I've gone ahead and put the uh, species, if you wanna look it up on the internet, when you don't put walking iris, just go ahead and put like the in LO on your folia and you'll go ahead and get exactly what that was. And if you've got the handout, the handout has this uh, scientific names also. When you're gonna look something up on the internet, 
when you put in the name, if you'll go ahead and add your zip code to the end, you will find that you're going to go ahead and get really what you're looking for. You're not going to get something that will grow in Wisconsin. You're going to get something that will grow in the Louisiana area. And that's really all what you need to do. It works very, very well. Now, you really need to know about yellow flag. Yellow flag is Iris sedacris, and it is a yellow bloom. Louisiana iris will bloom on the tip of the foliage itself. The yellow flag is going to go ahead and have a bloom that's probably six inches below the top of the green. It is going to be a small bloom, and it's going to it's going to be a small bloom and it doesn't bloom as much as the Louisiana Iris, unless they really get a whole lot of fertilizer. This is an excellent landscape plant. It is a plant that you can put in with minimum maintenance and fertilizer. It's going to be green year round. The thing that you need to be aware of is you put your hand on the foliage about midway and you're going to feel a ridge, you're gonna, it almost feels like you have a wire right in the middle. And that's pretty much yellow flag. It is not a native. People have a tendency to think that it's a native. Many times when people ask me, okay, I've got ours, but they're not bloom. Well, they don't bloom as much as the other. You buy this, this is really for the foliage. It will grow on the side. Of a, of a pond, does very well. What you need to be aware of this is you do not want to add it in a regular flower bed. You don't want to mix yellow flag with Louisiana ours because yellow flag will go ahead and take over. It is prolific. It's going to go ahead and reproduce and it will smother out anything that you have around it, especially Louisiana ours. While we're at it, we need to understand something because many times people say, look, I planted five or six different colors of Louisiana iris. Three years later, I have one color. You know, did they all cross pollinate? They didn't all cross pollinate. When you planted the Louisiana iris, different kinds, you're going to have some that are going to be much stronger than the other, much more healthy, and they're gonna go ahead and survive and they multiply and they will cut out the ones that are the weaker ones. So if you have different kinds and you wanna make sure and keep them, don't plant them all together. Uh, if you look on the right-hand side, you're gonna see the seeds. This is the seeds for the Iris sedacris. The seeds for the Louisiana Iris are very similar. And what needs to be done as far as maintenance is after the blooming season, whenever you feel comfortable, but before July the 4th, because July the 4th is pretty much at the time that the seed pods are going to be ready to go ahead and burst open and spread all over. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and cut the bloom stalk as close as you can to the ground. It doesn't need to stay on there. It's just going ahead and really it doesn't look good to begin with and it's never going to look any better. So you want to go ahead and, and cut it down and discard all of your seeds because you want to go ahead and have whatever rhizomes that you have, they will go ahead and reproduce. The seeds can be planted in a different area it's going to be probably three to four years before they'll go ahead and bloom and they won't be true to the color that you bought to begin with. So you really don't want to go ahead and keep the, the seeds. Now, Dutch iris are pretty. Dutch iris are very, very available. Most of the box stores have them. They come in a lot of different colors. It's Dutch iris. It's not bearded and it's not Louisiana iris. They're, the flowers are basically similar. Uh, this is two pictures of Dutch iris right here. Comes in many, many different colors. Dutch iris in general are shorter. Uh, the leaves are wider, very similar to bearded iris. Instead of like an inch or so, the leaves are gonna be maybe two inches. 
they're going to be shorter. Usually, most of them are like 12 inches. The blooms are interesting. They're very pretty. Uh, the white has a tendency to grow very, very well in Louisiana, and you will have Dutch iris for a long time. The, uh, it, it's something you probably could go ahead and, and try. Now, African iris, you wonder what it is, okay? You see the flower on the left? Well, that, when you look at the, uh, the clump on the right, that's pretty much the proportion of the flower to the, uh, to the foliage. The foliage is an excellent landscape plant. It froze, but I think that the rhizomes will do fine. But the last freeze that we had, everything is brown. Now, what it'll what happen to it, if you'll just go ahead and cut the tops off, it'll do well. This is considered African iris. It has a, there's another one that's a little bit of a different color. This is the one that's more common. It will go ahead and grow when you have a whole lot of, uh, when you have drought or when you have too much water. So it is not picky. When you plant it, it needs a little dab of, of uh, fertilizer and you need to kind of keep it weed free, but it will go ahead and reproduce and it'll last oh, eight to 10 years at least. Now, Siberian iris is probably something that you need to go ahead. If you like them, you need to, uh, you need to buy them every year. You can get them at the box stores. Uh, they're interesting. And I'm talking, uh, you're, it's not something that you're going to, it's pretty. I say it's pretty because it has a long, tall stalk and it's got a small flower. It's almost like a miniature Louisiana iris. And the bloom is very, very similar to the species in that we're not talking about fancy curly leaves or inside. Uh, it's a fairly good uh, cut flower. They last about four or five years. It bloom, the bloom season is late, late in April, early summer. Uh, the stalks are about the same. They really don't go ahead. They don't get any diseases as such. And there's a lot of different kinds. It almost looks like a bow. Now I'll put this here so that you can see, yes, that is the species growing in the swamps. Uh, why would they go ahead and be blooming? Just remember that you've got deciduous leaves, deciduous trees. So you have a certain amount of sun. And at this time of year, most of the trees have not gone ahead and greened out. So they have enough span. Now, uh, what they're doing with the restoration uh, project is they're trying to go ahead and add uh, fertilizer. Now they don't ordinarily when they grow in the wild by themselves, but you have enough nutrients from the trees. When the trees, when the leaves come down and they have a tendency to disintegrate and it looks fine on the thing. There's several different areas and when you get a chance to see it, it's fine. Now the uh, area behind Burden has area, we planted Louisiana iris around the two uh, ponds that they've got in the back. So it, it has, you have a similar look. So that's here in Baton Rouge. Uh, Hilltop, if you wanna go ahead and see iris, uh, Hilltop has some in the back area. Now we have some here, obviously we have a larger collection on a thing, but if you wanna see them in a while, I'm going to go ahead and mention to you, if you happen to be on the road and you see some iris in the ditch, you probably need to let them for somebody else to look at. I'm not sure whose property it is. I, I just would not encourage you to go ahead and do that. Now, in summary, your, your spring bloom is really, really interesting. It's a fairly inexpensive plant. To, to purchase. They're relatively disease-free, does multiply rapidly. And because of the iris, we probably have some for anybody else. Uh, there's a lot of information on the uh, internet. Uh, Zydecoiris.com has a lot of information as far as how to go ahead and do it. LouisianaIris.com is the other. Uh, the last on the references, the Louisiana Iris, the Taming of Native American Wildflower, second edition, 
I know the library used to be, always had a couple of them that got the, uh, I know they've got the first edition. That has a whole lot of information if you're interested in how they develop new ones. And they've also got, now the second edition has more pictures than the first, so that you can see the pictures of the different um, cultivars there are. Um, Zydeco's got, a, there's several other ones that do. Now, Bodark doesn't have a, uh, as much. She's up in uh, near Homa area on the thing. If you have any questions, uh, we can go ahead and take them on the thing. This is a botanic, this is Botanic Garden at Independence Park. And we have, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, the, I have some questions that uh, she, what is the best time to visit the Botanic Garden to see the irises blooming? Routinely, I would say the last week in March and the first two weeks in April, I would say that they probably will blooming will be a little bit later because the buds are not. But we've got so many other things for you to look at. Why don't you just go ahead and come anyway? Uh, we're located right behind the right behind the library. Uh, right, well, we share the same square in the in the landscape, so to speak. Uh, we've got other things to go ahead and see. Probably for the uh, for the hours, I want to say in around Easter time, because and it and Easter changes. And I, you know, I'm just thinking about this right now. Routinely for Easter, most of them were blooming, and Easter changes around every year. So we're going to have Easter, I think, a couple of weeks from now. But uh, it would be good. We've got a lot of different other things. We've got uh, herb garden and we've got the, uh, the daylilies. Uh, daylilies are made of October, so to speak, uh, just to sit down in a bench underneath the, uh, underneath the oak tree is interesting because you hear birds and you hear all kinds of different things when it's in the, uh, we've got a walkway and the uh, Confederate Jasmine hasn't gone ahead and filled the top part yet. I'm looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's in between, well, actually, if you go to the library, you can just go ahead and see it from there. It's a walk and you've got a fountain on the side, but there's a vine that they've gone ahead and put across and it should be interesting when uh, it's that way. When's the best time to fertilize? You fertilize uh, Louisiana iris in October, uh, probably mid-October, and then you want to fertilize them in, again in middle of January. Yes, I know you don't feel like doing anything in the middle of January. Just go sprinkle a little bit of fertilizer out, and the you want to go ahead and do it when you're doing your prep work in uh, the middle of February. Uh, you want to go ahead and give a little on that. And when I say they're heavy feeders, if you have a tendency to put two tablespoons in a small area, go ahead and put four tablespoons. It's, uh, they, you really don't need to load them up. Uh, and if your soil is very, very good, they will probably do well. I uh, was doing a cleanup at my house several years ago, and it was in the middle of, I had never thought about you know, the mid uh, October fertilization and most of the time we didn't do it. So I had some stuff that I just wanted to clean up. So I got rid of it. Well, I want to know, I want you to know the following year, I told somebody, I said, you have no idea how much, how many blooms I have. He said, I bet you put out fertilizer. And I did. Uh, what's the copper color Louisiana iris from the slides before uh, Professor Claude? copper colored before Professor Claude. That was, I'd have to look back. Uh, copper colored Louisiana iris would be full and it's probably Professor Neal, I wanna say that because that's pretty much what everybody enjoys, either Professor Neal or Professor Jim. Uh, copper, and, and for some reason or other, the photograph that I have of Professor Neil is one of the better ones because of the lighting. I've not been able, it's one I picked and one I took with my camera and I've not been able to go ahead and do that. But it was probably Professor Neil. 
Can I grow yellow flag plants in the concrete mixing pans like you do with Louisiana iris? I have several fragrant plants that need to be moved. I have several flag plants that need to be moved. Oh yes, you can grow, uh, you can grow the yellow flag uh, in the containers. The containers are not a new thing. The containers have been used for probably four to five years for most of your, um, for, for most of the people that actually do Louisiana Iris. You see, the problem of a lot of times is you're gonna have uh, different, you're gonna plant two varieties. And when you turn around, they have a tendency and you're not quite sure which is which. Another time, another thing is that people in the city, now people in the city are using those containers. What they do is they don't insert them into the ground. They put them on top of the ground and they plant the iris in them. And they'll go ahead and put some type of decorative border on the side to where you don't really have no idea that they, and you put mulch on the top. You have no idea they're really in containers, that it's not in a bed you have a control of taking it and moving it out. But if, you, now I'll tell you what, if you have a swimming pool and you want the yellow flag, because yellow flag, it's, I mean, it's gonna be graying year round. It's not gonna go, well, you're not gonna have the blooms, but you can put them in a container and almost forget about them. Three fourths of the time, unless you, when you're cutting the grass, that. If your grass grows tall and it's got grass seeds in it, and you're gonna go ahead and throw the seeds in. But in general, you're not gonna have that many weed seeds that are gonna go ahead and fall in that container. They will do well in the container. And you put in regular potting soil, and unless you wanna go ahead and, and do it differently, because I experimented with it and it works, it works okay. It doesn't have the same depth. Just like if you go ahead and put a pot in a pond, you plant the pot with your iris and you insert the plant into the pond and you would need to go ahead and use some kind of a chicken wire to go ahead and hold your soil in. But you definitely, they, uh, I don't want to go ahead and say that the yellow flag is not good because you just have to understand you don't want them in competition with your uh, Louisiana Rs because they're gonna win. You don't wanna go ahead and plant Louisiana Rs under trees because the tree is king. The tree is going to absorb all of the fertilizer, all of the uh, moisture. Uh, it's not gonna, now it's gonna disturb the root system when you go ahead and, and use a shovel, uh, but it's, it's really, you know, the, the tree is gonna go ahead and come out. It's just a stronger plant. It's from Africa. It's not a, uh, it's not a native uh, in North America. So that would be in. Jennifer, do we have any more questions? Was that it? No, you did that one. Right. Oh, no, I'm sorry. One more. Do, do they do well in low areas of a yard where water stands during the rain? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they do very well. Uh, now you might have competition with the weeds, uh, but if you have a low air, if you have a low spot in your yard, you can very easily go ahead and do Louisiana iris. You can, uh, you know, it does, it, it can grow in standing water. Uh, I have containers that are deeper than the ones that I showed you. And I hadn't looked at them in a while. So I had two feet of water and the iris are getting ready to bloom at my house in two feet of water. Now I have since uh, bailed out the extra water. I left just a couple of benches at the bottom. They're in, they're in containers themselves. Uh, a three gallon container is about a foot and a half tall. So the, uh, so the iris are doing fairly well. They don't have sun. You need a certain amount of sun, but they have a tendency to they're forgiving. They will go ahead and they'll go ahead and just grow. You know, they've been here for years and years and they're gonna go ahead and continue to grow. Some of the newer varieties are not good. Now I went ahead and put discovery series and we're doing this the uh, 
we're doing the talk the second Saturday. Uh, Saturday of every month, and it's at 10 o'clock, and it's at the main library. And I appreciate your attendance and hope to see you at the garden one of these days. Thank you.